What's going on guys, Slam Horizon here coming at you with my team recap for the PCL Season 3. Um, the draft rules for them are as you pick your Mega first, and it takes up a respective slot in that tier. And then, from there on, you draft three from a tier, and you have to pick a team captain. And for this time, my Mega is not my team captain, even though you see my Mega there. But, you'll see who my team captain is later. But, so right now, as we're getting into things, you see that I got Lola Megalopony. And I was third pick of 14, by the way. So being third of 14, I had to, I had to wait 22 picks, or 22 before, like, some picks. 22 picks before my pick, and at times 4 picks before my pick. So it's a little, it's a decent spot, but not, you know, too great. As you see, we got Megalopony there, Lola, who is going to be in a heel ball, just so you all know. And... I'm really surprised, I'm not surprised I got her because I was third pick, but then at the same time it's just like, I have Megalopony, I'm going to be tearing through, tearing through the teams. And then we have uh, Black and Decker, the Excadrill, uh, who's going to be male in, I think, what ball should I put it in? I think I'm going to put it in, uh, in just a normal Pokeball, because that's what fits its color scheme. But this is going to be, you know, my spinner. I got this thing because it's amazing with rapid spin. And against the team with magic bouncers, I can go in and set up stealth rocks or poison them and whatnot with mold breaker, which will be awesome. So I got two of the Pokemon from my top five list, which is insane. Up next, we have Stratus, Thunder Therian, who's going to be in a great ball. And I literally got this thing. I needed a fast electric type, and this thing was still there. And honestly, you run this thing choice specs and it can tear through teams. And it's a, just a really, really good electric type. It's good at what it does. Oh, by the way, I'm doing new lighting. I have like a, a light, a lamp thing right here, right behind my computer. So, uh, up next, we have my favorite dragon type, as you guys have seen from my egglock, Sephira the Salamence, who is going to be female. And I love Salamence, man. I love Salamence. Uh, physical special mix scarf, uh, defensive assault vest. You can do anything you want with Salamence, and it'll just be awesome. And we have—I couldn't think of a name for this, so I just call it Slither to Io to keep up with the times. The Myelotic. And this is just going to be bulky, bulky Pokemon in a dive ball. Salamence will be in a uh, luxury ball. It. Uh, yeah, but Milotic is going to be in a dive ball. It's going to be insanely, insanely bulky. And I can't wait for people to, to um, experience its bulkiness. And then we have down here Slurpuff, or Mrs. Puff the Slurpuff, who will be in a heel ball again. Because he's pink. And this is, um, if I get this thing behind dual screens, you'll see later I have a dual screen either. I set up a belly drum, this thing won't be beach unless they have, you know, scissor plus two. So, and then, uh, um, but yeah, so you pair up Salamence with, um, with the Miss, you pair up Sephira, Mrs. Puff, and Black and Decker, you have my Fairy Dragon Steel core. Later on, I'll name off my other cores that I have as well. So we're going into my RU and NU picks. First RU pick, I was 12th RU picker, I think. Yeah, 12th in RU, instead of being 3rd, because it was going in reverse when we got to RU. And I was really surprised that I got Tangrowth. Like, it was top of my list, top of probably a lot of people's lists, yet it was still there. And this thing is going to be, you know, bulky paired up with my Lodic with Regenerator. This thing isn't going to die too much, unless I let it die. I'm not gonna, I'm barely gonna let this thing die. It's going to do many, many things that I'm not gonna let, and I've used it before. It has an insane special attack stat, and you give it focus blasting, giga drain, and moves like that. You can also give it knockoff and earthquake. And this thing can tear holes through teams, it can take out Pokemon that you wouldn't expect. 
and it will be in a, um, a nest ball. And then we have a Smug the Sneasel. He's going to be in a heel ball because it matches the color scheme perfectly. Who, as you saw um, last season, that my mascot was Weavile, and it has changed. Or um, my logo has changed my team name. I'm no longer the Minnesota Weaviles. I am the Minnesota Monfernos, as you can see by the background right here. I will be the Minnesota Monfernos. But I still had to pick up an homage to the Minnesota Weaviles and go with Smug the Sneasel just to just to have the homage. And even though it's a Sneasel, hold up, look at these stats. Base 115 speed, base 95 attack. This thing is going to be pursuit trapping almost everything. And then we have Golbat Man the Golbat. If you saw my Poke Crate opening, you'll know why I, I named it Golbat Man. But it uh, is bulky as crap. That's why I got it. It's really bulky. You give it Super Fang and some other end roost and some other coverage stuff. This thing isn't going to die either. With EVO Light, this thing isn't going to die. And another star from the PCL Monotype offseason along with Lola, I have Da Vinci the Smeargle, where this time I was third pick for NU for the first round, so I had to I had to pick up Smeargle. Because you know, smash passing is a thing, I'm going to try to take advantage of that as much as possible, and if I can, that'll be awesome, let's hope I can screw it up like the offseason. But, you know, Smeargle's gonna put in some work, there's a Mon later in the draft that I'm gonna try to pass some sh shell smashes to, and we're definitely going to use, um, take it to, um, for its full advantage. And now we have Emotionless, the Mesprit, and it's the, be the, the being of motion, so of emotion, so I'm just going to call it Emotionless, so that way you can't really do much about it. And this is going to be, you know, primary rock setter, this is going to be dual screen user if I want to, it's going to do whatever I really need it to fill. And it's just, you know, a good Pokemon in the tier that it's in, and it's a good Pokemon in this league. And then we have uh, Frozen Bacon, the Pyloswine. Now, when in UU, I wanted Mamoswine, but I couldn't pass up Slurpuff, and I think Mamoswine was picked by that anyways. But Pyloswine is bulky with thick fat, so fire-type moves won't really do too much to it. The only things that can really harm it are fighting, water, and I think that's it, fighting and water. But this thing is going to be also another Stealth Rock user. It's going to be there, like, some weeks I could run a full offensive set and just tear holes through teams. Some weeks I could just, you know, use it for what it's used for, which is being a physically defensive monster. And the last three Pokemon we have, I did it. I, I drafted my, my, uh, my mascot. Some of you are probably going to call me crazy for this. Some of you are going to call me insanely crazy for this. However... Mascot. I kind of had to. It is. I did. I did some calcs of this. Uh, a life orb close combat from this thing, or not life orb? Yeah, life orb close combat from this does 85% to max defense EVO light chancy. So I mean, even though it's a Monferno, this thing can be insane. You give it EVO Light and make it really bulky, it can be a Stealth Rock user with Will-O-Wisp, Low Kick, stuff like that, to come in and take out some other threats. And give it Iron Fist, Mock Punch, Fake Out, Fire Punch, and Stealth Rocks, and it can just be annoying to deal with. And I have a lot of EVO Light Mons, so I gotta be knockoff wary. That's what, um, what is it? I don't really have a good switch in to knockoff. But I gotta be, I have to be a little bit knockoff wary. I definitely have to be knockoff wary. But most of the time, if I do bring, you know, Monferno, it may be Eviolite, but sometimes I'll run Sash just to make it similar to Infernape. But you know, I had, I had to get it. And then we have Manos, Spanish for hands, the Dustclops, who is just gonna be bulky as everything. It gets some um, Nightshade. It's a bunch of status moves, and it can just be there to annoy the crap out of people. It can sprunge up physical hits, can come in on Pokemon using the high jump kick that don't have Scrappy, and it can just do a lot. Something I plan to do, though, I forgot to say this. Um, Monferno is my team captain. It has to be. It's going to be. And 
And what I'm going to try to do a lot is smash pass to it. If I can smash pass to this safely, uh, I'm going to get this thing a lot of kills. I'm going to try to at least. And then after Manos, we have Mr. Krabs the Kingler. And I know I already have a water type, but Kingler, I've used it before. You choice scarf for this thing and give it insane coverage with like Crab Hammer, Super Power, Knock Off, and X Scissor, or what was the other move that I saw? I was looking through the moves earlier. Um, some of the main moves I'd be using and some of the only moves I'd be using are Crab Hammer, Knock Off, uh, Rock Slide, Super Power, and X Scissor. And like, I don't even have to scarf it, I can do double dancing because I get Swords Dance and Agility if I really wanted to double dance with. Um, Kingler, I could double dance. But that is my entire team. It is the team I got. I'm very, very happy with it, and I'm excited to use this team to start tearing holes through other people's teams. I tried not to repeat types as much as possible. I know I have a normal repeat with Smeargle and Megalopony. I have a fighting repeat with Lopony. I'm on Inferno. I have a water repeat through these two. And the only other repeat I have is flying between these. So, I mean, if I have Excadrill, I'm probably pretty much going to be bringing Excadrill to almost every match if I bring these three. I probably won't be bringing these three together. But these three right here paired up with Excadrill. Excadrill keeps the rocks away, and these three come in and do whatever they please. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I expect to have a lot of awesome battles this season. And by the way, I'm going to start doing live recordings for DS battles, so that means there's not going to be too much face cam. I'm sorry if you like face cam, but um, some people like live recording more, so I'm going to try to do live recording for these battles. Every now and then it might be a post, uh, post commentary instead of live commentary. But it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a fun season. I hope you all enjoyed.